you see I'm being recorded, this is Zion from uh, is Haifa, Israel. Today is the uh, 17th of August, 2024. We would like to start with a musical piece performed by my band of uh, the Haifa Wind Band, the non-professionals under the custody of the municipality of Haifa. And this mu musical piece is uh, Latin music by the name Kumbancheo. Did you say something? No. It's okay? Never mind the picture. You don't see the picture? No. Leave it. It doesn't matter. The sound is good.
So you heard the music, but you didn't see the picture? No, no, it came. As it, I think there's something with the, the streaming to your telephone or something. It's okay. I it was fine. Wonderful. Okay, the point is I'm starting each time with a musical piece. What I used to say from the very beginning a few months ago with my sessions, have been speaking again and again in, about the importance of the spiritual circus. And uh, <laughs> have been participating in a few groups in the Baba Zoom and the uh, other communities of uh, different uh, spiritual movements. And hardly, uh, the truth is, no one is saying anything whatsoever about the importance of spiritual circus and the role in the fall of man and the reconstruction of humanity to its true position. What we witness, we have witnessed just now, a group of individuals, uh, around 30, let's say more or less, all sitting together, united, focused on the conductress, our uh, maestro Shiri Khan, as she could conduct also our Philharmonic, but our small country has only five, six professional uh, orchestras, like the Philharmonic or the Symphonic of Jerusalem. A few also, we have uh, Philharmonic in Haifa, in the, a few other cities. It's a very expensive business, costs a few millions of uh, shekels each month, salaries, maintenance, et cetera, et cetera. It's a very big deal. <laughs> and uh, if we, our humble band, would uh, all of us will quit and uh, perform every day for a few hours within two or three years, we'll become also professionals. I think the sound is pretty good, and it was from seven seven years ago, and today, seven eight years ago, today we are we are advancing all the time, thanks to our meticulous and. Uh, hard hand of our uh, conductress. She's our uh, darling dictator. And all of us submit to her dictates. Otherwise, there's no music. There's no democracy in music. All this came to portray what spiritual circle is. Group of people working together doesn't matter what they do. Here, this is a musical band, but we're supposed to play the music wherever we have been uh, acting on, on the planet. Working as uh, groups of uh, individuals who are centered on the divine beloved. Now, I don't know if in my group, the musicians are centered on the divine beloved. I have never asked them. And of course, I have never told them where my focus has been. Most likely, they, excuse me, they wouldn't understand what I mean by this. The divine beloved, the spiritual circus, it would sound like a Greek to all of them. So, of course, uh, I keep uh, my nose where it's supposed to be. It's not going to help anything. It will cause only destruction and animosity. One of these weirdos who are trying to fix uh, this uh, world, you don't know your own mind, etc. I've been through all this. Some good hearts like to up, uh, elevate this world and tell them we have to believe in this and that. We have a spiritual master or we have this wonderful religion. If you adhere to it, you'll see in no time all suffering will evaporate from the planet. And it's not working. Why it is not working? Because we, the spiritual people, do not uh, provide a spiritual compass for humanity, to guide humanity, to lessen the burden of ignorance and evil sanskaras, and lead us to the goal. We are not doing it and we're complaining. That's the current situation. So what's happening? Because we discarded this uh, 
blessed opportunity in the perfect state. When this happened on the axis of time, I don't know if it was 3,000 years ago, 3 million or 30 million years ago, it doesn't matter. What is the metaphor for something that's happening all the time? You know, all the time, we have the opportunity of reconstructing ourselves and humanity to the true path, and uh, we are simply not doing it for whatever reason. And of course, I don't blame anyone. It's not the issue. It's just to, <clears throat> to bring some awareness where we are. Because many of us, spiritual people, I see it all the time, pointing fingers at others. You are the good guys, and you are the, we are the good guys, you are the bad guys. And you should usually, the, <laughs> since I have been going to Meirabad, so since the 90s, almost every year, almost always I had to encounter somebody who would attack my person because I am the bad Israeli who harasses the poor uh, Palestinians. And uh, we came here to drive them away, and this and that, and all these stories. And I tried to clarify in my former session from last week. If you understood it or not, I don't know. You can hear it again. I know this is not so simple, and you might complain that I'm the Israeli. I'm defending the Israeli side. I'm not an Israeli. I'm not an Arab. I'm doing the work that my beloved entrusted me. And this work has been from the 70s. I was started to be trained how to erase some scars under his guidance. There's no way whatsoever that we humans I can speak only for myself. Maybe you know how to erase some scars. I have no idea. I knew at that time, discovered that I cannot do it. And the, his lordness, I got, I got the, in some complicated situation. I didn't know how to get out of it. It's like a fly, fed like a fly and meshed in the, the spider web. Not be able to get out of it. Then uh, the beloved, with whom I already had the direct experience, walked, stepped into the picture and started to teach me how to erase some scars. This was consciously from 76, he erased some scars already before that, but I was not conscious of these things happened and I will kept on being freed from all such, uh, all kinds of things, but I didn't understand what it means. And of course I didn't know what some scars are because I started to read the discourses only in the beginning of the eighties and I started to understand what sanskars are only maybe from 84, 86, when I started to the, translate the, the discourses into Hebrew. Bottom line is that everything has to be given to him. And he is the, so he is the only one who can erase sanskars. I, I can, maybe you can, I don't know. I have no idea what is your experience. I'm talking about uh, the general public, the general humanity. As the way it seems in the world, it is uh, <coughs> quite apparent. The humanity has no idea what Sanskaras are. They have no idea the consequences of evil thoughts and evil feeling. And there is a problem of lack of centering from the divine beloved. And they're inventing all kinds of systems and religions supposedly to guide humanity, but uh, what we have been witnessing the past uh, couple of thousand years since religion started to control the human minds, <clears throat> that the divisions and the hatreds and the conflicts and the war between humans have been only increasing. But the people of God who are supposed to bring peace on us, create further and further, destruction and entanglement, and now it's reaching its peak. Humanity received means of self-destruction by also terrific means of war, which have never been existed till uh, 200 years ago. <clears throat> One may person can erase entire city in, in, on a click of a button. And I think uh, these means of destructions were given to us deliberately by the masters. So we humans will have to make a choice if we continue 
serving the process of creation or destroy ourselves. I think it is a deliberate decision of the masters. That's my opinion. That's my understanding. Is the truth or not? I don't know what it's going to be. We are going to find out, but this is my strong inner uh, insight. And I hope that uh, we will learn the lessons and each time we get together, <clears throat> center on the divine beloved, walk together with harmony. What is a spiritual circle? Is a union of the opposites. What's happening with most systems is demand that all of us will play the same tune. <clears throat> all of us will be in one accord. How can you play music with, with one accord? That's the way it would sound only like one consistent tone. They don't understand these principles of the union of the opposites, only music. When you study music, you learn that you cannot write music without uniting the opposites, etc. Now, my, I would like to, to share a little bit with my army experiences after I listened to the good long talk of Peter Nordin spoke about Meir Baba on war. It seems that from his talks that he had, I'm doubtful if he even went to the army, not to say that he went to any war. Now we are in Israel because we are being surrounded by enemies the past hundred years, it's not the past uh, 76, seven years, since 1947. The war has started hundred years ago in 20, 1922. And actually it was started 1500 years ago. Allegedly the prophet Muhammad declared war against the Jews. This is in the Hadith. We're not going to get in, in legs into it. It's quite disturbing. The statement, statements of Prophet Muhammad, our beloved Baba, who called the, the Jews, called me, Baba called me an ape and a pig. And uh, Baba said, so the, the last battle, I like sometimes to change this name of Muhammad to Baba, because Baba said that he was Muhammad. Now, when I change his name, you make up for yourself if it, it makes sense these statements, was they made up or not? The one of the statements in the Hadith, the Hadith is the interpretation of the words of Muhammad. And whatsoever is written in the Quran is ineffable, not, not to be questioned. And these days, if you questioned it, also they decided it uh, 200 years after Muhammad, if you question anything in the Quran, and they made up the Quran, presumably the first 200 years after Muhammad, uh, concluded by Halif Mutawakkil, I believe. I'm not a Muslim historian. You can go and study this uh, complicated, difficult history. And he decided that this version of the Quran is final. He was a Halif. The Halif is a person who knows what God wants, not less than this. I think none of them had any idea whatsoever about spirituality or what is God. But this is a matter of opinion. I think more of, to my understanding, they started to build a tremendous empire, defeated Byzantium, which was a, the biggest power in the Middle East, and defeated Persia, which was even bigger, maybe. In 50 years, they conquered the Arabs, conquered the entire Middle East. They took over Egypt, reached uh, Iraq and uh, further. They eventually took the entire Northern Africa and reached all the way to uh, India, eventually. These are the wrong stories. I don't want to get into it. But everybody was doing it. All humans, all empires were developing uh, strong armies started to conquer the world. This is the history of humanity. It's all alone. Till recently, we still have now uh, 
great powers seeking to take dominion over the earth. And we can see it all over the place. They don't want to get into it as a part of the fall of man. <clears throat> Major part of the fall of man is to call a piece of land mine. They, they bisect the land by lines on the maps and say, this is mine, this is yours. If you touch mine, this is Kazus belly, we start a war with you, etc. But the truth is nothing belongs to any one of us. And all this dispute over tracts of land, just as a symptom of the fall of man, because, because we humans came here to serve the mother, mother earth, everything belongs to her, not to us. And you cannot say anything like uh, mine at all. And each time somebody said, this is mine, and you took it by force, he is uh, proclaiming that he is uh, spiritually ignorant. And as a this situation has been that all of humanity in the grips of total ignorance and don't understand <clears throat> purpose of creation and what, what is going to be, what, and why it is like this. And it's getting only worse. And well, what it is, the only one who can uh, save the world is if we will, uh, all of us will surrender to the divine will, the divine beloved. I just, we don't understand. We, we totally lost it. <clears throat> And we, we as a group of Babalavas, now I'm speaking again to my darling Babalavas. <laughs> Are we, well, what are the actions that we have been doing to reconstruct humanity back to its path? How do we, spiritual people, provide the compass that humanity will be restored to its uh, proper uh, <clears throat> spiritual task, which is me learning how to minimize the ignorance which causes a terrific uh, uh, negative sanskaras and being stored in subconscious mind. If the level of this, at a certain point, with the levels of negative, bleak, or dark sanskaras accumulating in the subconscious mind, at a certain level, it reaches a certain level, we cannot enter the spiritual path anymore. And the only way to erase sanskaras is entering the spiritual path. And if you cannot enter the spiritual path, if no <clears throat> justification to be at all on the divine, uh, on the cosmic uh, spiritual game. And if the entire humanity will, will reach such a stage, it will say, face automatic paralaya, or ma paralaya, the whole creation will cease to be. And all of us uh, will face, uh, let's say, unhappy situation. We will get stuck on the way. We will not be able to advance. We'll stay, remain with some sort of state of consciousness without being able to adjust. We will not be able to take human form. And uh, we will get stuck with, within ourselves. In heaven, in hell, whatsoever we have created for ourselves, Till a new opportunity will uh, arise by the divine uh, authorities. And this might take, in the good case, a couple of billions of years to will really have a, a new ready plan. So the only one who kept on diverting this disaster is Avatar, is only the sole authority of preventing Pralaya or Mahapralaya. He's the only one who can do it. He has infinite capabilities, the genius of the avatar, but he's not changing the laws or forgiving people. This is a childish notion that uh, the Lord Yeshua, Jesus, when he was crucified, he, <laughs> he erased our sins. This is totally childish because it, it, it never happened. He gave us opportunity. He kept on open the gates and we will learn how to erase our sanskars. He didn't erase any sanskar, and there's a fact it has been that you can see the world is a total chaos and the suffering is only increasing. And Mayor Baba came with the same <clears throat> infinite capabilities of wielding the law of karma according to the law of karma. And as far as I understand it, and I see it with, due to my experience, that he kept the door of opportunity open for all of us.
come back to our spiritual position and start to uh, heal humanity. And unfortunately, unfortunately, as I have been witnessing it in our dear community, wonderful people, wonderful capabilities, the best teachings ever given to humanity, and uh, we hardly see it. And uh, presumably, is the only place I've witnessed it was during 2002, I have visited, I visited uh, Walnut Creek and I was invited to the first uh, talk of the Murshita Kono. She gave her first speech. My host there in the Bray area, Walnut Creek, was Sheri Plamli from the Sufis, with whom I made friends already in Meir Abad, some time before that. And uh, <clears throat> we made a tour to the West Coast and we stayed there for a month, a month and a half, here and there with the Baba lovers, and it was a wonderful time, etc. And when I was invited to the first speech of the Murshida, I came to the hall, so this is a closed uh, family meeting. You have to ask permission to join. I had to write a letter to the Murshida, and she gave me permission to attend the meeting. It's not open for the public. And uh, when I shared the meeting, I'm talking about 2002, 22 years ago. First, it, it felt like a very <clears throat> warm family together, very loving people. It was very sympathetic and very nice. And then Moshida started to talk. And when she started to talk, <clears throat> at a certain point, I felt as if the whole uh, forum, the entire building is being surcharged. Everything became as if golden rain was pouring from heaven. <clears throat> I'm not a seer and I don't see auras, but and I was rubbing my eyes. If what I see is, is true and everything was golden and the Murshida was standing there surrounded by some kind of a halo of gold and everything was the whole, the whole, everything. And the atmosphere was divine atmosphere, the wonderful, divine, us, love, amazing. That was my experience. I hope they continue doing their good work. I don't know, I'm not a Sufi. And sometimes I have communication with uh, some of my Sufi friends, but of course they have no idea what they're doing now. If they believe they continue doing the good work. And this is the only group in the Baba community as you're working together, all the participants, I think there were maybe 200, more or less, maybe more, I don't know. I think there are 400 Sufis there. I'm not sure, I don't know. And all of them must work together under the conductor, the conductress of uh, spiritual focus, the Murshida. It's just a same principle as a musical band. We, as musicians, we would never be able to produce music without being centered on the conductress. It's not possible, just the same like this. And we don't understand this principle. And hopefully, it's all the, at least we have one group in the Bible world which is, has been doing it, I believe. To continue with this, I don't know why they shouldn't. Was simply it was awesome and wonderful experience. So why not to continue this? This is an experience of the heavenly garden. So <clears throat> there are such pockets all over the planets of uh, groups of individuals who work together, centered on the divine beloved and creating the di divine energy. Now this humanity ordinarily cannot see. For example, I can tell you that uh, here in Israel, also in Jerusalem, there are small groups of individuals, the Kabbalists, also the masters in the esotericism of Judaism, which sprang from uh, Zoroaster, the Kabbalah, or the Sufism, 
the initiator was uh, Lord Zoroast. He initiated, he initiated this stream of uh, esotericism to humanity for souls, individuals who are willing to take the hardships of spiritual development and share the burden of uplifting humanity. This is, uh, and they do work. I some here and there during my years of participation, especially in Jerusalem, I met, I touched here and there a little bit such groups. And uh, there are small groups and they do more than all of us, Baba lovers combined 10 times are not doing. Small groups. Let's say five people, 10 people do spiritual work that we are not doing and we don't know how to do it. So I'm saying it, let's say from the divine, there's, there's the Lord is watching the humanity and he sees all these things. You see all these pockets and all these places where people are doing a real spiritual work. And if you put it on the scale and you decide, you see, that's who, what's happening. Such group doing real spiritual work will uh, outdo 8 billion idiots walking like uh, egoists. They can do it. Because the focus of the divine below, numbers don't count. It. What counts is our uh, focusing and the sincerity and the directness and the uh, meticulousness of our spiritual work. The world doesn't see it, doesn't stern it. But this is one of the reasons, uh, I believe, I think, people would uh, complain uh, complain to me why uh, Baba made a mistake uh, sticking this Israel into the eye of Islam. One Baba lovers once in the past told me this. <laughs> this is Baba's mistake, really. And uh, what was the answer? my answer to this uh, person? <laughs> so he is the only mistake Baba made. And he has to correct this mistake, and it's true for all of us. I am the mistake Baba made, and it's my duty, it has been my duty in this lifespan to correct this mistake. Of course, I say it with humor, but it's also a very serious issue. We all of us have fallen, and all of us have to redeem ourselves, to come back to our spiritual alignment. Otherwise, we'll waste our lifespan on earth, we come back again and again, like a broken record, achieving nothing. This is a sad story. But the opportunity is different. And we have to stay positive and trusting that uh, our good will, our good intentions will have to balance out the wrongs of humanity. We have to learn to work together like a team. I don't see it yet. We have many nice groups working here and there. I'm talking about the Baba world. I'm not uh, much involved now with other spiritual groups. I have met spiritual groups, uh, not because I was choosing it, but because uh, Baba sent me here and there to understand how other spiritual groups have been working. And they do better work than we do, by all respects. They are not focused on the divine beloved. They don't accept Meir Baba. And here and there, I was daring to say Meir Baba, and usually that was the end of our relations. <laughs> just participating in spiritual groups, and uh, we discussing issues, and uh, from time to time, I would say, made a comment about this and that, and wasn't. From where it comes, from where it comes. And then uh, in the beginning, I was not took so clever. I said, Mayor Baba said it. Oh, Mayor Baba, this is, uh, how they call it, a negative force is an Indian master. We don't accept Indian master. All kinds of things. Just look at the things. If they are uh, rational, if they are correct. All the time I met, I met uh, many spiritual people, all the time they are afraid of all kinds of devils concealed in the, in the sheep skin, so they will look uh, cute, but uh, under the 
Behind aren't there, there are all these kind of uh, evil masters seeking to grab your souls. And there are many people who are really convinced about this. So, of course, it's total nonsense. Nobody can steal our souls, and we are the <laughs> responsible people, and whatsoever happens to us is due to our own decisions. But this is the humanity, unfortunately. Tell you a few more stories about the world. <clears throat> okay. I trust next time, uh, I believe I will more or less uh, will uh, be <clears throat> done with this issue. Even I can uh, keep on uh, talking about uh, this uh, for the next uh, 10 sessions. I have endless uh, stories about uh, participating in the army, in the wars and the endless relations with Arabic people, which is uh, quite amazing. True, also for today, presumably this karma didn't come to an end. I live in a mixed neighborhood of uh, what you call Arabs and Jews living together next door. You have here, uh, Arabs and Jews living uh, in apartment building, door to door. And you see, you hear some screams, uh, bodies flying, there are nothing. Considerably quiet, considerably peaceful. Don't hear, you didn't hear any shouting so far, didn't hear any gunshots, didn't hear anything. And I'm here, uh, close to on and off 13 years, the past six years, we have decided to move and to live here in this neighborhood. And uh, it's okay. Nothing is perfect, nothing is the best, but uh, it's, it's reasonably acceptable. For me, more than enough. I personally don't care about the situation. I was born to the war of 1948. It's said in the past. <clears throat> and the war, there was a United Nations resolution to the, the two state solutions that decided with the majority of the nations decided to divide the land of Israel, Palestine, doesn't matter the name, between the two nations, the so-called Arabs and so-called Israelis or Jews. But they will live with peace and Jerusalem was supposed to be international because this is a holy city for three, three main religions, etc. The Arabs in that world in the United Nations denied it forcefully and then gave ultimatum to the Israeli or Jewish leaders, if they declare independence, they will uh, attack this country and uh, annihilate it. And we are dealing about 600,000 people who call themselves Jews, versus uh, how many Arabs have been around Israel at that time? 50 million, 100 million, 200 million, more than billion Muslims, etc. They could finish Israel in uh, three days just to walk inside and throw stones without any arms. And the <clears throat> British left the country and left the entire population unarmed with no heavy arms. They didn't have one single heavy arm. They didn't have any, anything but uh, handguns. And a few mortars were made up. And they had to resist right away the invasion uh, of uh, the the local Arabs who came to destroy Israel, and they were at least uh, twice bigger, I believe, about a million Arabs. But they were not organized, and they lost the war, and the, the Arabic countries, they, say, I think in seven Arabic countries invaded the, the land of Israel in order to exterminate the new state of Israel. And they failed. And they don't understand how these days, how could they could have failed so miserably and get such a small group of people with a few arms. But this what happened. And uh, we, since then, we keep on having wars nonstop. It's a nonstop state of war, unfortunately. And they're only getting worse as, uh, each time. After each war, there are many casualties and many 
increase amount of suffering and uh, to make a reconciliation is getting harder and harder. And unfortunately, it is a decree of Islam that they don't allow any non-Muslims to have their own independent states on Muslim ground. It's according to the will of Muhammad, if I'm not wrong, I'm not an expert in this, but I believe this is it. And you cannot find from the Morocco till Indonesia, one single country on a Muslim ground which were given to a non-Muslim nation. And there are hundreds of non-Muslim nations within Islam. I'm not going to quote it. Some are half Muslims, some are Christians. They don't allow it. It's a casus belli. Long said story. The whole world has to become uh, painted green with a green flag. And now I'm here, you have to understand, as a Baba lover, to a person who's supposed to be trained by the avatar, um, I'm actually a go-between. I'm not saying anything bad against this one or that one. I don't point fingers and just try to describe the situation. And the situation in, is inflicting entire human race. It's not only here, the whole world is a concern because uh, tremendous uh, powers, military powers, have been accumulated in the Middle East from Iran till uh, the entire region. Enough power to destroy the planet a few times without nuclear weapons. Instead of directing all these efforts to peace and prosperity, that's the situation. When they started this so-called peace process uh, 30 years ago, I say so-called because you cannot make peace if it doesn't have spiritual uh, uh, grounds, and if you don't uh, <clears throat> recreate further spiritual circles, and all these people with, with good will, they have no idea what, server, what spiritual circles are. How can they know it? <coughs> if we, the spiritual people, don't provide. They cannot understand something unless they will experience, and we are not doing it, and we complain about it. Never mind. Because I'm not pointing a finger at, at my dear Babylons. Thirty years ago, when they started the so-called peace process, for example, uh, the president, uh, he, at that time was prime minister, or one of our main leaders, Shimon Peres, he was uh, one of the great helpers of the first prime minister, David Ben-Gurion, who announced the independence. And he suggested we'll turn Gaza Strip into Singapore. And the entire West Bank will turn everything uh, that the people who live there with uh, peace and prosperity and everybody learn to live together with respect, et cetera, et cetera. That was his vision. And this man, was a man of influence, and if he would call the world bankers, he said, I need $50 billion to return the Gaza Strip into Singapore, and they would give him an open check, and take as much as he would, half a billion, hundred billion, half, half a trillion, just make peace. They, they want peace and quiet. And then uh, if the leaders, both sides, would follow, then the Middle East would come back to be one of the most successful places on the planet, no doubt about it. But uh, <clears throat> the extremists of Islam they deny such a thing. The mass agenda is to take over the entire land, drive all the Jewish people away, or force them to become Muslims or slaves, demis. They call it demis, the second class citizens protected citizens, and they don't say it, but that this is part of the Hadith or the Quran. I'm not sure about this, but this is, is being enforced in Islam. In 1966, I joined the Israeli army by law. <clears throat> didn't really volunteer, didn't like uh, going there too much, but I had no choice, this is the law. And then uh, didn't think 
that I should evade my duties and those days it was pretty tough, you would go to jail or uh, <clears throat> you would be finished in the country. Everybody had to go. These days, I don't think even 20% are going to the army in, in Israel. And after six months of training, I joined the, one of the toughest military units of Israel. That was tank brigade number seven, the first tank brigade of Israel. Under the, <clears throat> the commander, which eventually became a general, Shmuel Gunen, was <laughs> legendary figure. I'll show the book I found recently about him. This is a person who used to be my commander from uh, 66 to 69. I was serving under him, and a few times I was his radio operator. He was extremely tight, disciplinary, disciplinarian, <clears throat> very rude, very tough person. He started, he joined the military when he was 14 in Jerusalem. Jerusalem was constantly being attacked. I'm talking about before 1948. There are non-stop uh, skirmishes between Jews and Arabs, unfortunately. As I said in my former sessions, the main person who was responsible for this, who instigated uh, this uh, war between Jews and Arabs was the religious mufti of Jerusalem. He has a main 99% responsibility. He did everything he could to avert any peace process between Jews and Arabs. Till he died. He sent his emissaries to kill Arabs who wanted to make uh, amends with the Jews and live, find a way of common, uh, that they will be able to share together and work together as a, uh, Respect, uh, respect to full uh, people. So in spite of all this, as a no spiritual circles, so still they can find a modus operandi, like uh, let's say in Europe more or less, and other countries, we have more or less a liberal democracy. I personally don't believe much in this because uh, <clears throat> you cannot, it's not, nothing is going to work unless we will be focused on the divine beloved and reenact the spiritual service. All attempts are doomed to fail sooner or later, but even such a situation, of course, is better than all this physical bloodshed and suffering, and the people are being wounded, and the widowed mother, etc., etc. 67, I was in the that, uh, tank brigade, and we, <clears throat> Israel was be being surrounded by the armies of Egypt and Syria, threatening to exterminate the country, and he didn't have any much of a choice, but uh, uh, Israel <clears throat> launched a surprise attack against Egypt. This was June 67. On the fourth day, <clears throat> I was already in the Suez Canal. And to explain the horrors of war, I was there, I was just a young boy, 19, all of us, we were 19, 20, 22, the officers were more uh, mature people. Some of them already participated in former wars, etc. were veterans of many wars. And uh, to describe the carnage, what we have been doing against each other is unbelievable. Simply, I, I still see it, smell it till now. But then after that, I finished the army service 69. And I didn't know exactly what to do with myself. I didn't have a profession. I hated the world. It's a long story. I'm not going to burden you. But a friend of mine suggested that we, I was in communications in the army. Then he suggested, why shouldn't I join the communications of the police force? And I did, and I spent three and a half years in the police force, mainly in Jerusalem and Bethlehem. I think I spent two and a half years in Bethlehem, birthplace of the Christ, police, police station of Bethlehem. I was doing a 
uh, shifts of uh, in the communications, uh, getting uh, <clears throat> messages from the teleprinter, sending messages, uh, delivering the news to the officers and uh, telling, uh, being in charge of all the movements, communication between the various forces, etc. By the end of 72, by 72, Baba came to my life. I told the story in the forum of sessions. I was in a store to look for something. I didn't know what. I came to spiritual group of the anthroposophists, a food of Steiner. And after six months, somebody sent me to a woman in Jerusalem. That was Kerry Ben Shama. And as soon as I entered the Baba room, I became uh, I granted the experience of the Baba realization, as I call it, which is not good realization. I knew who he was instantly. And this has been my life ever since, focusing on him and trying to readjust and know what to do with it. And it took seven excruciating, painful years till 79, <clears throat> more or less. Great hardships to start to work on the racing scars, trying to being established uh, on spirituality, the constant tug of internal tug of war between the desires and the ideal. This uh, have taken uh, many years of inner struggle, or more correct, inner work. Till I believe more eventually over the years, if you're persistent, you come eventually to some kind of uh, equilibrium. <clears throat> you need for this a lot of persistence. So you need mainly the grace of the avatar. Without this grace, it's impossible to achieve. And since then, I started as I was uh, in the, came back to the military in 1973. I felt being pushed out of my comfortable position in the police. Um, I was kind of uh, free. I was making uh, my shift, and then I was would be free for a couple of days. The police gave me a room and uh, food. I had very no need to, for any expenses. And I didn't care about the world as too much. I was considerably comfortable, as you call it. And it's, uh, by the end of 72, Baba started to push me out of this uh, comfortable place. I felt a strong push that I have to go quit the force and move to the world, start to learn to Company, but they didn't teach me construction. I had to start from the, the very basics. And in 73, I was out of the police force. And then my first, uh, after I left the police force, it was the first time I was recruited in the reserves. And I was stationed in Jerusalem. This was the last military parade of the mighty army of Israel making a show for the whole world, the strength and might of the Israeli army. And I was on the, the radio operator. I was working next to the officer who was in charge of the whole operation. And he would give directives and, I, and myself or the radio would give the orders to the various forces that they have to start to move and to do whatever would serve had to be. And then after a while, <clears throat> my tanks from the seventh brigade are approaching. Of course, I knew them. I knew the tanks. I knew the insignia of the brigade, which is some kind of a seven with a, a sword or something. Maybe it's here in the book. I still have it somewhere. No, I don't see it here. I'm looking at the 
book of uh, I don't see any pictures. This, this is a book of my general. I communicated with the author. I wrote uh, mem my memoirs on that, uh, on my army phase. And he was quite impressed. And he told me, sorry, did he know it before? He would have included some of my stories. Never mind. Doesn't matter. I am seeing these tanks of my brigade coming, approaching on the military parade. And my heart sank when I saw them. And inside I felt soon these forces will be destroyed. A few months later, during October, the war erupted between uh, Egypt and Syria. They attacked Israel, made a surprise attack on Israel. And the tank brigade number seven suffered the main brunt of the war on the Golan Heights, north of Israel, attempting to stop the advancing stream of uh, Syrian tanks. There were thousands of them against, against a couple of hundred uh, Israeli tanks. The Air Force was busy in the Suez Canal. The situation was very grave, but a few people from the tank brigade and others managed to stop the invading forces of the Syrians with heavy losses, etc. After that, <clears throat> war came to an end. We know eventually there was this uh, peace process between Egypt, Israel and Egypt. Israel gave back the entire peninsula. It was under the directives uh, of the Americans who con controlled the, supposedly the Middle East till now, supporting both Israel and Egypt, giving money to both countries so they will be able to uh, at least not start hostilities again against each other, supposedly. And after that, I became, I moved. I became a field fighter, a soldier, a, what you call a GI, a field soldier in one of the battalions of uh, our, our main uh, infantry brigade of Israel. And during this time, while I was serving there, we had to take care of the Arab community. There was an uprising in Israel, what they call it, the First Intifada. And we were sent there to the first, it was the 80s, to act as a police force against this Arabic uprising, which was actually a lot skirmishes between the Arabs themselves. All kinds of criminals were trying to take advantage of the situation to harm their, uh, their own people. So we were sent there as a, or my platoon was sent there to <clears throat> Nablus and Ramallah to monitor the situation, to act actually as a police force, to establish some kind of uh, tranquility and peace. And we were, uh, all of us, uh, veterans of wars and field fighters. We, none of us wanted to do police work, but this is a commandment of the government. And I am, as a person who submitted, surrendered to Baba, whatsoever is coming to me, is his will, if I have to serve his army, to do my duties, then uh, this is his will. That's the way I took it. I didn't think at all about good and bad. That's what he wants. This is my master. You go to war, you don't go to war, you do this, you do, do that. Since Baba walked into my life, whatsoever I've been doing, according to what I understood, that this is his will, not my will. Otherwise, I will, <laughs> my will, I would leave the country. My brother, my elder brother, already left the country in the 50s. Yeah. And after uh, I was released from the army in 69, 
He asked me if I want to join with him in France, and I would stay away from all these troubles and conflicts and the harsh living and the fight for survival in the work feelings. It doesn't matter. Uh, it's not a land of uh, gold in uh, France, but uh, there's a moment. Uh, they have no constant worlds. It's not at the moment, at least. Currently, they're facing a very serious problems, but this is a different story. So one of my anecdotes, sir, I was going there, and whenever I go, <clears throat> I do Baba's work, which is I'm Sapping the scars from the situ circumstances situation. If I go to Naples, I, wherever I go, I take the circumstance, I take the vibrations, I take the aura of the place, I absorb it, and give it to them. That's the way it's for. That's the way he trained me to do. Since 76, conscious. I'm doing it all the time. And it took about uh, 15 years of hard uh, uh, strenuous exercises till this process became automatic and natural. So it's happening all the time now, as, as if during the decades of training, this process of absorbing some scars and giving it to their beloved. So he will handle them, erase them or not erase them. That's his issue. It's not mine. We'll have to give it to him. And uh, remember we went to Nablus, they call it Jabal el Nar, the mountain of fire. This is the name of Hashem uh, or Nablus in Arabism, the mountain of fire, because this is, they used to be one of the main centers of resistance for the so-called uh, Israeli occupation. Of course, uh, I don't want to get involved with occupation, non-occupation, forget all this. The whole thing is uh, stupid human nonsense. The earth doesn't belong to anyone, and that's what it is. We cannot say, I spoke in the beginning, we cannot say, my land, this piece of land is mine, you took it from me, you didn't take it. Nothing belongs to us. I have a small square of land written on my name, I know it's not mine. We eventually will go away from me, I'll give it back to the mother for her, uh, all of us will go away. We leave this uh, coat, temporary coat, we'll give it back to the mother for her uh, work whatsoever. <clears throat> so since I have been doing this work, for example, you work in Nablus, and I uh, spent there more than a month on duty, Often being attacked by the people, where they were got a few times we were being attacked by petrol bombs. It's a very hostile place, but fortunately we didn't have any casualties, and we hardly inflicted any casualties. And you see, we have very powerful weapons, and we could have killed, let's say, as many people as we wanted. Always I could have claimed self-defense. I think, thankfully, to Baba. They need to shoot anyone in the flesh this life spent, but uh, part of my work was delivering the, the orders of the officers to the fighting forces. You shoot here, you shoot there, so it, it doesn't matter. But since I moved to Baba, it's all Baba's uh, actions. Since I surrendered to him, whatsoever I have been doing goes to him for better and worse. So I don't concern about this. What happened after we finished uh, this armed service over there? <clears throat> we didn't kill anyone, but as soon as uh, we another platoon came to replace us, the first day they came, they already killed two people. Now the platoon received a special uh, uh, decoration or uh, thank you from the military governor, Israeli military governor, a colonel, who appreciated our platoon, so we didn't cause any casualties among the Arabic population. If it's due to the fact that I was there, I don't know. But it happened again and again. We went again here and again there. 
And uh, also I was, uh, at that time, started to speak some Arabic. I started to learn Arabic from Arabic workers from the beginning of 81, 82. I was working the territories, recruiting. Uh, I was doing construction. I needed the workers. I recruited Arabic workers from the neighboring uh, towns and uh, camps. There was a refugee camp. I had uh, all kinds of villages and towns. Had many relations with Arabs at that time. <clears throat> and uh, not once, uh, my, my officer would take me uh, to the whole block or wherever it's needed because I already knew a few sentences in Arabic. So I can talk to the people in Arabic and so to calm them down. We, we are not many terrorists. We, we don't we didn't come here to harm them, etc. And it itself, you could see it in the face. Uh, I would uh, ask him a few questions in Arabic. Are you feeling? Are you cold? Are you this? Or you want water or something? And you could say his eyes will expression will change, etc. Because I was afraid that maybe it's the middle of the night, we'll shoot them, nobody will know, etc. Yeah. They are not doing such things. My years in the army, I have never heard. <clears throat> we have many bad people in, in the country, I admit. Unfortunately, but I've never heard that uh, an Israeli soldier uh, raped an Arabic woman. Or maybe it happened, but I mean, I've never heard about this. I heard uh, other things. There are many people who hate Arabs due to the wars and the people who are suffering. And some uh, take the law in their hands, some take, uh, take revenge, which is not allowed, also by the law of Moses. But it happens. The whole world is in shambles. What can we do with this? But I, I myself was trying to keep my focus on the divine beloved, beloved, where I go and do his work of giving uh, these sanskars. <clears throat> One of the situations uh, we, we were on a roadblock, monitoring, monitoring the cars which would come, and this was during the 80s. Almost 40 years ago. Yes. Time passes by so fast. So part of my duty was to make a body search. You would tell people to get off the car and check if they have concealed weapons on them, check the cars, check the trunk, you look under the car, because we knew that people are smuggling uh, arms, <clears throat> etc. And while I was doing this work, making body search, I was putting my hands on the people. Who, of course, you can imagine that we didn't like to do this. But once while I was doing, I felt that it's not my hands. That's when the people with Baba's hands. I had this uh, very powerful uh, experience that this is Baba is doing this, working on these sanskars. And I was quite amazed. So. What do we know when we do some work and we keep on our centering on the beloved? What is behind the veil? So I had some glimpses of such things. What's happening behind the veil? Now think about this. I have been doing this kind of work of taking the sanskars of both sides and so-called Israel. I don't care about Israel, so Arabs. Take this cloud of sanskars that the people are producing I bring it to Baba, and one of the main things for me to do, to go to Meir Abad, and you go to the Samadhi. Often I would go there once a year, or twice a year. Sorry, I could feel that my head is exploding from all these sanskars I have been uh, absorbing. And then, 10, 15 minutes and Samadhi, everything would evaporate, just like this. And each time would come to Merabat, I would have been attacked by the Baba lovers as a bad Israeli has come, and you criminals, what you're doing to the people, you're unjust, etc. But I had to keep uh, quiet and uh, compassionate. You don't understand uh, how to work for Baba. You don't understand what's happening behind the veil. And I'm not... Uh, judging anyone, of course. Just a minute, I have to take care of something with you for half a minute. Just a second.
And back to you. Sorry. We have also in our garden is a little zoo with uh, a few cats and a bird. This is a chicken just walked in. She likes to be with us. So I have to give her food. So it's a chicken. <laughs> Let's see it. If you can see. Maybe you saw it, I don't know. Never mind. Do this. It's the animals. Hello. It's a chicken. <laughs> it's fun. Okay. There's no end to the stories uh, of this, how to work on some scars and. Uh, we all of us have to be very careful when we say something, when we speak. Stay away of judgment. You never know. None of us knows what is behind the veil. We complain and judge. Even now, people who call the Bible, I was keep on uh, harassing and abusing my person because I'm the bad Israeli who non stop attacking the poor uh, Arabs. And they stole the land. And if you read what I prepared, what I presented, what I wrote, and if you don't understand, it's a hopeless case. And Baba's warning again and again, don't get involved with politics. Don't back by, don't judge. You don't know what is the truth. And many of us are very intelligent and they read the news. And the things that they know what's going on. We don't know what is going on. We don't know what is behind the veil. And uh, when we judge, we judge ourselves. One of Baba's main uh, teachings is whatsoever we see in this world has been our own creation. We have created this world in, in the former past lives. And what we have been witnessing now the consequences of our doings, good or bad. So when we point a finger toward somebody, point a finger toward ourselves, and thus we get enmeshed with a <clears throat> imaginary creation. All this is a, as Baba said, so well again, again, this is just a mirage. These are all pixels inside our imagination. It's not really the only solution is, is to focus on him. We don't do the spiritual side. We don't do anything. It doesn't matter. Focus on him only. At least you don't go down the spiritual path. That's all. <clears throat> That's all what I have to say. And uh, I'll stop the recording.